Hey guys, so I got a quick question for you. Um, what if I, as a white Caucasian, even though I'm a quarter Hawaiian, quarter Scottish, quarter Polish, quarter French, whatever that means, but I'm white, you know, because that's just the easiest thing to designate most people onto, um, <clears throat> with the European descent, even though I have island mixed with me, at what point can I identify as... I don't know, say a, a, a female uh, Filipino. I, I mean, people can apparently identify their own sex these days, so opinion has, you know, trumped biological fact, which is a scary thing, I think. Um, so if I were to fill out a census and this identity politics took over all of the nation, all of the world, all of the globe, what if I identify as a Filipino woman, but I'm actually a Caucasian man? You sh the only thing you should be able to declare is your religion, not your race, not your sex, unless you literally had a sex change. Just because you have a dick and wear a wig doesn't mean you're a woman. I'm sorry to say, biologically, you can identify that, and I will call you she. That's not the issue. The issue is with when it comes to, you know, reality and censuses and population um you know, censuses, stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's just really in Canada, you know, if you don't call someone by their pronoun, which they could have made up, you know, last week, um, you could get fined. So that's really an assault on free speech. And when the government tries to say you can't say something, that's Fahrenheit 451, and that's coming on HBO in a, in a month or two, okay? So to, to ban speech goes beyond trying to not offend someone. Yeah, you can respect them, say he or she, whatever you do. I've had to in two different jobs. A she turned into a he and a, a her, and a dude started taking testosterone, so he got boobies. Or, sorry, estrogen. Boobies, but he still had a dick. So, I, But I still called her she. So my question is, at what point should I legally be obligated to call you that? That's the really thing. And Jordan Peterson obviously has brought this up the past year, and is... Uh, basically dismantled it more than anyone could. Um, but it just makes sense because the kind of logic we have these days, you know, with like, you know, denial of the ancient history of humanity being much older than what they tell us, the pyramids being clearly older than, you know, a couple thousand years. And it, the Atlantic Ocean was there because there was Atlantis. There's proof that 13,000 uh, years ago, there was a rise back then, actually, in sea levels. That's what I meant to say. Like, over 400 feet, rise in sea levels 30,000 years ago. Exactly when the flood happens. And the flood is actually your pineal gland. It was the flood of the pineal gland when the moon came. The hollow fucking moon. It came. And it caused the flood, great catastrophes. You know, that, that came after the Venus comet. Because Venus is a comet. If, if you know anything about... Uh, the Thunderbolts of the Gods projects. I mean, it's there's a whole there's a whole milieu or milieu or whatever the fucking word is <laughs> of information and historical reference of Venus coming as a comet and be, Venus being recognized as a comet. And the Moon, there's a society called the Proselenes, which obviously knew that they they lived at a time in which there wasn't a Moon. Sorry, I'm getting off track. That's why they're called Proselenes before the Moon. Selena means Moon. Okay, and that's why the Illuminati used the name Selena. Like Selena, of course, from the 90s, an icon. Selena Gomez now. They, they use these names to um, personify, like, you know, the Queen of Heaven, Semiramis, Ishtar, Easter. You know, they need their little goddess, you know, and Madonna dressing up as the Baphomet, Lady Gaga. Like, it's just, all these idols are doing the exact same Babylonian worship, and it's ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's just funny to me. The moon changed the pineal gland. The fall of in Noah's Ark. You don't think that's the same as Gilgamesh and you know the other fifteen cultures I talked about a flood thousands and thousands of years ago. Same fucking thing. But the flood is also of the pineal gland. It's not just a literal flood. That's what that book, The Secret History of the World, talks about by Mark Booth. Secret History of the World. I got a Barnes and Noble in like 2010, 2011. 
It changes your whole aspect on what mythology is actually hiding. Mythology is not just stories for you to think about. They're hidden codes for you to understand. They're, uh, you think they're just going to say, oh, the stars hides the procession of the equinox, and there's the each zodiacal thing, order, order. No, they're going to hide it in storytelling and oral law so that the kids can still be entertained, but the adults hide the secret hidden messages. It's super important. What I'm talking about Hamlet's Mill, that book. It's all by uh, George Santiago, or Santalimo, sorry, I can't remember. Anyway, it's, it's classic, Hamlet's Mill. I bought it in England. This is another classic, The Noetic Science Universe by Dean Radden. This is actually the English edition. I bought this while in England. Um, but it's the exact scientific evidence for psychic phenomena. This is not a joke. He put people in other rooms. And did experiments involving the consciousness. Literally. That's all it is. And he's got stats, evidence, up to 400 pages of evidence showing that telepathy exists. That there's some kind of invisible ether that our bodies are connecting to. It has nothing to do with objective Newtonian science. And all quantum mechanics does anyway, as we know, is push towards the mind as being the ultimate... Um, uh, source the mind the mind is the ultimate uh end all of every situation and so when we uh, look at the observer effect in quantum physics and realize that when humans observe an experiment it changes the outcome of the experiment what does that tell you about particles what does that tell you about how when i'm looking at you i'm affecting your chemistry that's called vibe that's called aura i'm f affecting your energy your mood you know, and when we all have different planetary alignments affecting our subconscious, which was created during a previous planetary alignment that is forever your archetype, we're all just little chemicals experiment, experiencing each other and experimenting off of um, our different moods and auras and energies, dude. We're not just flesh walking around. We're emotion exuding our influence, just like Swedenborg says heaven is. Just like the DMT trippers say what that world is. You're controlled by emotions, not what you literally say. It's what you're thinking and feeling, and that's how you move forward. That's what Swedenberg, the Christian mystic, was saying in the 1700s. And he was a scientist for 40 years until angels had said, Hey, bitch, there's a spiritual world out there. So the next 40 years, he studied that and saw visions beyond anyone. And he's the Aquarius rabbit. Aquarius is... The genius of all the zodiac signs and the rabbit is the artistic scholar. Google it. It's a perfect combination for that kind of experience. That kind of experience. Not everyone is meant for that, but everyone is meant to at least hear about it. You're not meant to experience certain things, but you're here to learn about and try and try and figure out the human experience. And that's what astrology is doing. If the stars fought against Sisera. In Judges 5.20, that means the stars influence us today, Christians. If you don't want to say astro if you say astrology is pagan, what does Judges 5.20 say? The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. That means the stars affect reality biblically. So yeah, if you want to argue the Bible, I'm your man. But at the same time, I'm wearing this one-eyed t-shirt. I know, it's just a t-shirt, but I fucking hate it. I was on Live Me. I fucking got so pissed I ripped up a dollar bill with the pyramid on it. Because money doesn't mean anything. Because it's the Federal Reserve is not federal. And it's not backed up by any kind of gold standard. And it's just the banks fucking us over. They're creating money in their pockets which don't exist in reality. And it's a perfect system. I mean, we're in the dark ages. This is not a joke. This is not a fucking uh, a theory. This is the worst fucking age of all mankind. This is the end of animal kind. They're getting extinct. This is deforestation. There's a drug war on your consciousness. Meantime, they're disarming good law-abiding citizens so the criminals can keep getting their shit on the black market. The New World Order is coming. And it's not like every other fucking scripture said it wasn't. The Fifth Age is here. And it's not, it's not going to be some Age of Aquarius Enlightenment bullshit. It's the end of fucking time, and there might even be some alien invasion where they finally have disclosure and expose, oh yeah, the aliens did exist, but 
they're going to infect us. And so we have to fight, we have to come together as a new world order to fight against the aliens. That's one theory in the Bible. You know, the iron mixed with clay, the iron being the android robot terminator 2 shit being mixed with the clay, your flesh, DNA. That's the book of Daniel. It speaks in metaphors. It's not going to say aliens are coming down, going to change your consciousness like the Borgs in Star Trek. That's not what scripture would say. It would say something fucking metaphorical, genius. And if you have no fucking inkling or clue for archetypes, you're going to miss it. And you fucking anthropologists need to study mythology. And you theologians need to study fucking ancient history, not just Christian history. Because if the prophecy is true, it's hidden everywhere. And guess what it is? The Grox has already showed us all the fucking... The, all the, ar- the, the, the hieroglyphs and the Sumerian tablets and the Egyptian uh, 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 pictures. It's literally pictures. They spoke in pictures. And it shows the clown coming down at the end times every time. Literally. The clown. It. Yes. The devil. All that shit. The clown is everywhere. I've already made YouTube videos on it. I don't care if you haven't caught up yet. Anyway, so there's a whole conspiracy being hidden by not just the Illuminati of the 1700s, but the secret societies that have been running this world since day one. They weren't called Freemasons back then or Illuminati back then. They're just called the fucking, the knowers, the people who knew everything. And then when Atlantis happened and it wiped all the knowledge away and then the Library of Alexandria was fucking looted and put in the Vatican Library and shut up for everyone to never be able to see again, now they have control. They have all the knowledge that they, that's been suppressed. They have free energy. They have the cure to cancer. They changed the notes from 440 hertz to 432, fucking with your consciousness. They're outlawing weapons for good people and the government's bulking up. North Korea and South Korea just united. Trump said fuck you to Iran because they're shitheads anyway, like all the Middle East. And he's voting for Trump is pro-Israel and they want to call Trump a Nazi. But who cares? He's Illuminati, just like Obama and everyone. This is not some kind of fucking obvious game to you. But anyway, that's just my opinion. I got more where that fucking came from, dude. There's a huge war right now. A spiritual war. It's not some fucking Marvel DC comic fucking book. Even though it's this hiding the same shit in the, <laughs> in the Bible. Every fucking comic book that's been released now is some kind of end times biblical symbolism. Ragnarok means end of times. And Viking, bitch. I mean, how the fuck more plain can they get? With their symbolism. The end's coming. And you can't fucking pray your way out of it. You're either predestinated in Romans 8.28 and Ephesians 1 and 4. Or you're a vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. Who has to be fucking tested in the new world order in order to get to heaven. Hopefully the raptured elect will get will get the fuck out of here. And dodge the fifth age coming. It's sad because I grew up wanting the age of Aquarius because I was the sign of Aquarius and I watched hair, but Jupiter aligning with Mars has nothing to do with the age of Aquarius. When the moon's in the seventh house, it has nothing to do with the age of Aquarius. That musical hair is just a bunch of fucking propaganda gobbledygook to make astrology seem dumb and you hippies want something to hold on to. I don't hold on to anything that I think is feel-goody if it doesn't follow the truth. All I hold on is to... All I hold on it to is truth. But I'm born to 1087. My son is in 21 degrees Aquarius out of 360 degrees in a zodiac. My son is in 21 degrees Aquarius. And there's a planet called Neptune which rules your spirituality. How you think about the world in a metaphysical sense. Frederick Nietzsche's is in 21 degrees Aquarius. My son, Nietzsche's Neptune, in 21 degrees Aquarius. So, my ego senses what the fuck he was trying to say could, what, what society could be like. And I don't know how to put, I mean, astrology confirms everything every day. And so does the Bible. And don't fucking think you have to categorize yourself into one or the other, because that's called identity politics. And that's what the fuck is wrong with this country today. I'm a black, gay, Muslim, who gives a fuck? What does your mind say? I was an ex-Jew, now Christian. 
People think I'm white or Mexican, but I'm just a quarter Hawaiian, so I'm darker skin. There's no categories. You're a person. That's what the West was all about, is the individual and getting rid of religious uh, persecution and racial persecution. It's just the individual. And now you just want to, you know, divert back to a tribal fucking identity politics. Well, I'm a part of this group, eh? You're not a part of a group. You're a person. And if you're being persecuted, buy a fucking gun because it's America and you have the Second Amendment and defend yourself. And people can say whatever the fuck they want, but if they touch you, they're wrong. But you should be able to say something back if you think, if you know and think you're right. You should not be able to have a no free speech zone. Everyone should be able to say whatever the fuck they want because when you start banning and outlawing free speech, that's just tyranny. That's not politeness. For the under, uh, for for the oppressed, no, that's fucking tyranny in disguise. Fascism is just a very, very extreme form of communism. Communism is group identity bullshit. And if you don't look at the Ukraine, look at Russia, look at China, look at the hundreds of millions of people communism killed, and then get back to me on, well, only fascism is the problem. Well, put away that hammer and sickle and get back to me.